Good evening, and welcome to our show tonight. My name is Jim McGuire, your host, and uh, we have a great show tonight about the treatment courts in Putnam County. Uh, this is a, a wonderful thing that started in 2002, I believe, in Putnam County. Yes, Jim? that is true. And uh, what it is is like, let's say you get in trouble, you commit a crime. Now, it, it used to go away for two or three years, whatever it was, but now they're giving you an opportunity to the courts to stay in the community, to be with your family, to keep a job and things like that. But then you have to sign a, a contract where you have to uh, report to an officer where they test your urine and, you know, really keep you on the straight and narrow road. And you got to complete this program in, in two years or, or longer. It depends on how you do. So it's really a wonderful thing. And I'm so happy to see this in Putnam County. And it saves a lot of money for the county yeah. <laughs> on top of it all. So we have a great panel with us tonight. I want to mention who they are and they can introduce themselves. We have with us tonight, uh, uh, Justice Jim Reitz from the Putnam County Court System. Jim, thank thanks you, for sir. coming. Thank you. Uh, Joseph DeMazzo is here, the Deputy Commissioner of Mental Health and Youth Bureau Services. Joe is here. Thanks for coming, Joe. Thank you, Jim. And also we have a, uh, a lovely guest tonight, uh, Michelle uh, Gumina. 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 <laughs> Gumina. <laughs> and she went through the treatment program, and she's here tonight to talk about her experiences. So we'll get started, okay? Uh, could you all say a little bit about your, your jobs and your duties and, uh, you know, why this is such an important uh, topic? Want to start with you, Jim? Oh, sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jim Reitz, a lifelong resident of Putnam County, and I'm very privileged and honored to serve the people in Putnam through the county court. Uh, about uh, 10 years ago, 11 years, years ago, this program was started, and for the last seven, I've been the county court judge and uh, had the privilege and honor of serving in the treatment court. And uh, that's why we're here today to try to help uh, get uh, this information out to people so they know what's going on. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Gamina. I am fortunately a uh, previous graduate and participant. I graduated treatment court in 2011. I have, um, I participated. It was challenging. Unfortunately, uh, I made it through the program and I'm here tonight to share a little bit about my experience there. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Joe DeMarzo, I'm the Deputy Thank Commissioner you. of uh, Social Services, Mental Health, and the Youth Bureau. Uh, my role with Commissioner Piazza is to oversee all of the continuum of care for mental health, uh, alcohol, and substance abuse services, uh, as well as OPWDD. Um, we also uh, steer the ship for Department of Social Services and uh, all of the programs that support people in need. And then we have the Youth Bureau and all of its positive youth development programs. And uh, I'm really pleased to be here, Jim. Uh, this is a, a great group you've assembled, and I'm looking forward to a great discussion. Oh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, thanks, thank you all for coming. Sure. I really appreciate that. Um, this idea to help people instead of going to jail, uh, uh, does it really save money for the county? Uh, would you say uh, no? it, it does and, yeah. and it saves um, dollars Jim in many many ways mm -hmm. it saves dollars for people who would be facing state prison time mm -hmm. um, the cost of state prison is roughly sixty thousand dollars a year uh, sixty thousand dollars a year we have roughly a hundred participants um, so that's roughly six million dollars of monies that are not being currently paid or being diverted not everyone is successful but there are other things that I think the judge can talk about for people financially Sure. Um, and their contributions. Every aspect of one's life is part of treatment and recovery. And so not only do you have the direct cost savings in terms of the incarceration, and that's $60,000 per individual, that's amazing, that direct cost, but also when they're not in jail and they're being held accountable, make no mistake, this is not an easy program, they're held accountable. And Michelle will uh, talk to that in a few moments. But they're also then, once recovery really starts to take place, they start to become economically uh, responsible as well. They take care of their families, they take care of their kids, the, whether it's child support, direct payments, whatever it may be in terms of housing and so on. They're out there in the community getting the treatment they need, uh, being held responsible, but yet also taking care of their responsibilities at home as well. You know, another important aspect of that is that they become part of the community again. They're a taxpayer. They're then vested back in their community. They've gotten their life back. And I think Michelle is a shining example of a person who uh, made some poor choices and is really a wonderful individual. And I think it would be a great time to hear Michelle's story. Yes, yeah, sure. I, Michelle? Yeah. I, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and for your kind words, Joe. Um, for me, alcoholism and substance abuse took away uh, everything 
you know, it, it destroyed my relationships with my family, with my daughter especially. I was once, you know, a prominent and functioning member of the society. I had a job. I was a teacher. But, you know, as my, you know, alcoholism progressed, I began to lose those things. And for me, uh, divine intervention stepped in, I like to call it. Mm -hmm. And my bottom was, you know, the consequences, you know. Yes, you know, big consequence was I could have died. And I didn't. I was arrested. And with that, you know, came a lot of other <laughs> consequences, such as probation. And when I uh, violated uh, felony probation in 2008, I was deferred to Putnam County Treatment Court and sentenced to begin in January of 2009. And it was a tough road, and it was very challenging. I didn't, I wasn't, I, I went to treatment court to avoid going to state prison. And <coughs> that, it, you know, alcoholism and substance abuse, this disease, it, it's, 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 okay. It's brutal, isn't it's it? It's brutal. It really is. <laughs> it takes its toll. It's, and are, we're yeah. not thinking straight. We don't make good decisions. Right. Michelle, can I share something? Go ahead. We've talked Georgia. about this. I've gotten Michelle's permission. Joe and I have uh, met with her earlier today again to review it. And I want to tell you something. Michelle was no easy case. And uh, there were times when she first came into the program, I think she was on death's door because of the uh, substance abuse and the issues that she was putting herself through and the decisions, choices she was making very sick, so much out of it, not really thinking straight, not making any good decisions. She finally was arrested, and that's the start of saving her life, as far as I'm concerned, and I think Michelle and her family would admit that as well. We went through a program for over two years where I had to put Michelle in the correction facility on several occasions to try to shock her, wake her up, get her to think straight and make good decisions. And I have to tell you, Jim, it was not easy. Uh, there were times when the team, and I want to talk about the team in a oh, moment yeah. and how this works. It's not just one individual. I'm just privileged to work with so many great, knowledgeable experts in the field throughout the entire community that make this what they call the Putnam County Treatment Court team. Michelle is living proof. You could be in the lowest of levels, desperation on death's door, and somehow you say divine in intervention. I agree with you. Um, the fact of the matter is, somehow, she woke up. And I'm telling you, it took her almost two years to wake up through this program. It wasn't easy. Michelle touched on something very important. We all, we're, we're not naive in the court system or mm -hmm. anywhere in the community based on treatment court. We know most, if not all, people come into the program wanting to avoid state prison, period. We know that. We're not kidding ourselves, but we hope along the way that they uh, get to, to realize that they are worth something, they are a decent people, they have a lot to offer, and they have a great future. And so with Michelle, and the reason why we want her here today to talk with you is that you can hear from the judge, you can hear from Joe, and so on, and, and we're going to give you all the information, but if you hear from somebody that has lived it and is doing well on a day-to-day -day basis, I think that really matters, and that's uh, what Michelle is all about. You know, one of the things, Jim, I think was important uh, for Michelle in the program is there's checks and balances in the program. There's probation, and there's providers there. There's the uh, sheriff's department, the district attorney's office. And Michelle um, had some bumps along the way and was incarcerated locally as violating her contract for, pro uh, for treatment court. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Michelle shared, and, and I'd like her to share if she's comfortable, is at some point the light comes on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't come on, Jim, by the way. Mm -hmm. For Michelle, it came on, and I think mm -hmm. that's an important part of the program is that it's a two-year program, and we're, we are tough, we're strong, we're sensitive, we're empathetic, we have a great team, and we try and give individualized supports for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what makes it successful. But I'll, I would like so, Michelle to share. You know, exactly. And, and it was that individualized treatment that I received from the, pa the team members on, in treatment court that helped me become successful. Mm -hmm. uh, when the light came on for me, I then grew up in treatment court. I took the help that was given to me. I became accountable for my decisions. I didn't allow, I knew I wasn't a bad person. I was a sick person trying to get better. And so I took the help that was being offered. Mm -hmm. And I got help for my disease, which Yes, you did. I did. Let and me tell you, Jack, <laughs> if I can, this team Georgia. is made up of the experts throughout the community. The, the issue is, I may be the judge, but uh, 
I need the help of the people that really know what they're doing. The right. people that really reached Michelle were the experts in our community. We were very fortunate to live in Putnam County. We have the best of the best in terms of treatment providers and agencies that participate. There's none less than 15 different agencies that meet on a weekly basis and talk and communicate throughout the week on every one of these cases of the 100 or so we have. Yeah. And uh, whether it's probation, the jail, Putnam Hospital, Arms Acres, Putnam Family Community Services, and all the other agencies involved. Joe, help me out there. There's other agencies There's involved. the district attorney's office the is, is involved as a prosecutor. Probation yes. is there. Um, the sheriff's office the has, sheriff's a, has a patrolman who is part of our team who go and does wow, uh, field mm -hmm. uh, checks at people's homes. Mm -hmm. um, we have three coordinators, um, two from the state, one from uh, Putnam County that has put its money up uh, to support this program. Uh, myself with social services and mental health and youth bureau to provide supports for people whether it's with public assistance or helping them find a job um, and what's nice is that um, it's a team approach and we have some really uh, interesting team meetings because mm -hmm. everyone is passionate about what they do and everyone has their personalities and it really at the end of the day w we feel good because we're attempting to help people help themselves right. by no means is Michelle's success because yeah. of us. Michelle's success is because of Michelle. Absolutely, she made some good choices. Can we talk, Jim, briefly sure, about what you indicated uh, about the team itself? And, yeah. and, and Joe mentioned a county position. The county, several years ago, about three years ago, learned that the court system was cutting back a great deal in funding. We were losing most of our coordinators. I was advised by uh, certain people in the court system to reduce the numbers down to 25, 30 members, give or take, because there weren't enough people to work the files. Well, our county executive and people in the, in the, in the county government, Mary, led by Mary Ellen O'Dell, our county executive, came to me one day and asked what we could do about it. Well, t uh, two years later, there's a permanent position created in Putnam County that's fully funded to help out a, a full-time coordinator. And that's why we can keep our numbers around the 100 or so and because people really do need help and that's what that's what this is all about so please people make no mistake in this time of economic crisis and everybody's suffering uh, these people need your help the most and, and by keeping these programs going we're helping change people's lives to keep them out of jail hold them fully accountable this is not an easy program and believe me they are held accountable and uh, for all the successes we have Michelle and so on we have so many more that are unsuccessful that either end up dead or in jail for in state prison for several years so this is not a perfect program and it doesn't work for everybody but I have to tell you by and large it started out years ago our recidivism rate was around 35 percent mm -hmm. based on the work the good work from Adam Levy and the district attorney's office and probation and all the agencies we have mentioned we have reduced that recidivism rate down to almost 12 12 and a half percent that's of those people that like Michelle that graduate on a day-to-day -day basis they are successful and there's only about 12 percent uh, recidivism rate based on uh, the work that these people do in Putnam County the best of the best we've got unbelievable support and and, and I'm wow. telling you we will do everything we can and we will do everything we can before we put somebody in jail you know yes. Jim you, you had mentioned um, earlier what's so special about this program mm -hmm. part of it is the philosophy that the team uh, under Judge Reach's direction has taken on. Mm -hmm. It's no longer catch and punish. Oh, it good. is that's identify good. and help. If we want to break the cycle of addiction, we have to do something different. Judge Miller, who I, I've known for many, many years and who was uh, the predecessor to Jim, used to say to me um, with a chuckle, uh, Stupidity Joe is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. And so yeah. this new trend of what we're doing, being tough but helping people, breaks the cycle or gives them an opportunity to break the cycle. If you send someone to state prison for two to seven to nine years, how many, how many years were you facing, Michelle? Uh, one and a third to four. One and a third four to four years, years prison. Yeah. We, we have people who are facing up to 20 years of state prison. Oh, yeah. They so, plead yeah. guilty up front so that there's no um, discussion yeah. afterwards if they're not successful. And, and Jim, but if you go to prison, you know, you're housed, you come out, you're, v you're hanging with the same people, people, places, and things. We need to break the cycle. This program yeah. gives people an opportunity yeah. to break that cycle and be Very successful. Good. Joe, can I share something with you on your thoughts, what you just said about the court system 
trying to identify and treat. 12, 15 years ago, that was not possible. 12, 15 years ago, the court system was not geared that way. Most people know and understand the court system and the legal system to be one to catch and punish, as Joe had mentioned. Right, right. Can you imagine now the philosophy of people being trained and taught that, wait a minute, maybe there's a better way of treating people. Maybe there's a better way of holding people accountable, right. treating them and solving the problems on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what this now court system is all about. And so what this program, what we're trying to do today with your help, Jim, and I thank you very much, a retired parole officer, yeah. so you know the system, you know how it works and how it doesn't work. With your help, we are educating people. We want you to know what's out there mm -hmm. and that there is a, a new philosophy in this court system. It's not just about arresting and punishing and, and forgetting about it. People, that everybody we've mentioned, the DA's office, the county government, the jails, every, all those agencies, they care. People are compassionate because we've all experienced in our own lives the uh, the issues concerning addiction mm -hmm. whether it's alcohol drugs or mental health and we do have a mental health component to this court on a case-by-case -case basis we treat those with mental health issues mm -hmm. and uh, we have the team members and many more throughout the mental health community that come in meet with us on a on a weekly basis mm -hmm. and help us out with all those issues concerning mental mm -hmm. health and i have to tell you by keeping those people out of jail holding them accountable not only do we save money but there's a moral component mm -hmm. and that's about treating people decently and fairly and and having them right. accountable in a fair way in a sure. just way and and trying to solve problems not having a revolving door where they just keep getting in trouble coming back to court mm -hmm. ending up dead or in state prison for years but how about this like michelle working uh, doing very well Having just been recently married, I was privileged to uh, marry her and uh, oh, uh, her husband, uh, and they met through treatment, and they're doing very well. And guess what? They are now helping others along the way. Okay. This is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And so we want the people in Putnam County to know yeah. that this is going on, that this is taking